You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of all God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, oh God, that belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. God is good all the time. I'm a witness. I, I always ask, say this, but I do hope that you were a witness to God's goodness this last week. And if not, I pray that this week he opens your eyes to the ways that he is working in your life. We have a really wonderful service this morning. Um, first of all, it starts off the fact that I'm wearing jeans. That's always a good thing. <laughs> so <laughs> that just never happens. If it's so anyway, y'all, let's, let's start our worship. If y'all will join me in standing as you are able. And we're going to sing one of our favorite camp songs. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you
Heavenly Father, you are good, you are holy, Lord. You are the one that brings us life because you yourself came out of that tomb. And so, Father, we thank you that we can follow you not only in this life but in the life to come. We thank you for the experience that Camp Eagle is for so many of us. We thank you, Father, that we can share what we learned at, during this one week with those that have supported us, those that love us. Father, may we glorify you with our words, with our dancing, with our singing, Father, with our life. We love you, and we ask you to bless this time. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all have a seat. Glad that you're here again. Um, Deb Cleary, so as she's coming up, um, y'all know that we have the Embrace Grace baby shower. Come on. <laughs> And um, Deb had asked for some people to come and show up, and she's going to let us know. So this is a picture from the um, Embrace Grace uh, baby shower that we held this past Wednesday at Restore Reproductive Health, and the one I had spoken to you about a couple of weeks ago. And um, as you can see, St. Paul is very well represented there. Um, I think it was, even though it was a bit chaotic at times, so I think we had up to 21 people at some points. Um, it's it's going to be chaotic with two baby showers uh, running at the same time and two babies there, actually, too. That was wonderful. But it was a success because of the amazing outpouring of love and support from this church family. Um, the donations actually exceeded what we had hoped to raise for the, the gifts for these young moms. And so with your permission, I would like to apply those uh, excess funds to the, the next Embrace class, which starts um, in September. Um, if you have any questions or concerns about that, please let me know. Um, and we also, uh, as, you, as you can see by the picture, we had all these wonderful ladies that came and supported these young moms who they probably didn't know, but it was just, it was a wonderful, wonderful event uh, full of uh, God's grace, and that's what we wanted to provide them. And so I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your support. Thanks, Deb. And we're appreciative to, to Deb and to Velva for, for leading that. And um, one of the things we always want to make sure that those young moms realize is we, we are thankful to God that they chose life. So we're always thankful for that. Okay, so speaking of some other just news, I don't have a picture because, y'all, I, I don't put pictures up unless I get people's permission to do it, and I just haven't done that yet. But we've been praying for, uh, for Wit Favor, baby Wit, and he came home, is that, and he came home Friday, y'all, and they sent me this beautiful picture, but I did not get permissions. But if they're okay with it, we will put it up. But God is good, and he is home, and the family is together again, so that's good. And then also just a... Um, FYI, we want to be praying um, Tuesday, this Tuesday, Mark Royce is going to be going in for another surgery um, on his, with his back. He's been having pain and everything again, and so we are going to be praying for Mark's successful surgery, for relief of the pain that they are able to get all of the, the cancer that they can, and so we're going to be praying for him um, during our prayer time. And uh, I believe... That is it. Because we are doing a children's, uh, a youth-led, children-led um, service, it's going to be a little bit different here, but that different is good. Y'all, different is good. So I'm going to invite um, Beth to come up, invite all the kids to come up, and um, we're going to start with our children's message. I go on. Yes. Well, good morning. <laughs> okay. So we think God will instantaneously grant us our request. Is this true? I know. <laughs> okay. So whenever we pray, do you think God's just going to like answer your prayer right away? Okay. Sometimes. 
Okay, I want to read from God's true word, Luke 18, verse 1 through 8. And he told them parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For, for a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not give God and will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night, he will delay long over them. I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, the son of the, son of the man comes, will he find faith on earth? What does the parable teach us? That we always, no, hold on, I'm going to read this part again. It says, hmm? God of Lord. Here, that they ought always to pray and not, not to lose heart. I suck at reading. Yeah, that we should always pray and not lose heart. Okay. Why do we often give up on prayer? That's true. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Here. And you expect it to go that fast. Grab one of these. Okay, hold on. So, I'm going to put this in here. Okay? Move this. Drop this. Okay, so let's just say this is when we pray and we want it to, like, we want our prayer to be answered right away, okay? Whoa, what? what? <laughs> I got stuck. No, hold on. Give me a second here. <laughs> it's not the wrong one. Okay, probably that. This is why it's confusing. <laughs> okay, so like I said, whenever we want God to answer our <laughs> prayers right away, see if it'll work this time. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, try it this way. I just don't think it likes me. Yeah. Okay, here, let's do the other one. This is confusing. <laughs> okay, so what is supposed to happen is this one's supposed to take forever, or not forever, this one's supposed to go down real fast. It's just going to go bloop, but it didn't work. <laughs> it's right here. Nope, it's empty. <laughs> this one, it takes forever like the other one, but this one's supposed to take forever. This one's supposed to go real fast. Okay. Nothing ever stays. Okay. How does that, this activity relate to our prayer lives? <coughs> There you go. Okay. <laughs> Why do you think the words trust, patience, and consistent and faith relate to our prayer tube activity? Yep. <laughs> that is true. 
What are some reasons why God may sometimes not instantaneously answer our prayers? It may not be his plan for us. Because what if you want something that's, like, outrageous? Like, I don't know. I don't know what an example is, but... Yeah, an elephant. Like, what if you want an elephant? And God's like, no, you don't get an elephant. Not now. Okay. That's a little extreme. <laughs> okay. What are, what are we supposed to do while we wait for God to answer? There you go. I mean, like, you have to wait. You can't just put everything down and stop. How is God still honored when we continue to pray, even though it seems to be doing no good? We need to praise God in all times, the good and the bad. When we get what we have prayed for and when we don't get what we have prayed for. Always remember... What Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8 reads. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who receives, the one who seeks finds. And for the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that so many of us have had to go to Camp Eagle. We were truly blessed to have been able to experience all that camp has to offer. Lord, we ask for rain, but we do know that it, you will send it. We pray for families to be strong and to rely on you. We pray for these kids' hearts to be filled with the love of Jesus and shine in all they do. In your name we pray. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 48 through 50. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face on on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with the sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Hello, my name is Landon. This is my second year at camp. I had a lot of fun, and I bet a lot of others did too. My favorite part was the neon party. We got to dance and wear glow sticks in the dark. After being at camp for a few days, I got kind of homesick, but we had a service at the amphitheater about David and Goliath. Hearing the story of David and singing the songs helped me calm down. I know I learned a lot at camp, and I can't wait to go next year. First Samuel 18, verses 1 through 4. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in the spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. 
Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Hi, my name is Corinne Jacobs. When we talked about this passage at camp, we observed the difference in the ways that Saul and Jonathan reacted to David defeating Goliath. Saul became afraid and jealous of David because Saul knew God was with David. Saul even goes on to try and kill David later in the story. Whereas Jonathan reacted with love and gave David his robe, tunic, sword, bow, and belt. Back then, all of those things showed people that Jonathan, or the person wearing them, was next in line for king. So by giving them to David, Jonathan acknowledged that God's plan was for David to be the next king. All in all, this story taught me that I should stop acting like Saul by being jealous, and instead I should try to be more like Jonathan by loving my neighbor as myself and celebrating their accomplishments with them. Second Samuel seven twelve through 17. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Hello, my name is Joseph Weimer, and I had a great time at camp this year. My favorite part is the Zip 3K, and I really liked the worship that they had there on the big kid's side, and all the stuff that we just got to do. Uh, and we got to do rappelling, and that was really fun, so. And so at camp, they have the 85 foot rappel that I did, and you get hooked up to the ropes, and then you have a figure eight, which is a friction stop, and you go rappelling down the side of the mountain with that, and it's pretty fun. Second Samuel chapter seven verses twelve through seventeen. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Second Samuel chapter twelve verses one through seven. The Lord sent to Nathan to Daniel, David. When he came to him, he said, "There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. When the rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb." that he had bought. He raised it, and it grew up with him and his children. He shared his food with it. It drank from his cup, and it even slept in its arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man who, who said, said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, this man who did this must die. He must pay for the lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I anointed you the king of Israel, and I deliver you from the hands of Saul. Hi, my name is Anna. This was my last year going to camp as a camper. Um, the night that we read this, we did something really cool. We went and did a race. You didn't have to run, but just walk. And they had signs along the race, and it said, I am a liar. And you could either go to the right or the left. And it was yes to the right and no to the left, and like that. 
and other signs too. I am a murderer, I cheat, I steal, things like that. And all of our counselors are out there and they had water guns and they were squirting us. And we thought they were, that we were being squirted with soap, like being clean because we were sinners. And when, later that night, um, while we were having worship, they turned off all the lights and we were talking about how David had sinned with Bathsheba and how awful it was. And everything got really dark. And then they turned on um, some black lights. And we could see that we were squirted all over with just neon goop. And <laughs> we talked about how when David sinned, he tried to cover it up. And God had to send Nathan to him to show him that God can still see what we do. Romans chapter 3, 23 through 26. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented presented Christ as a sacrifice atonement through the shedding of his blood. To be received by faith, he did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance he left sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just as the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. When we talked about this, um, we had our Zoom party. What we did was we all wore really fancy, really nice shirts and funky, weird pajama pants. And um, we had a really fancy dinner. We had tablecloths, and we ate fancy stir fry. And then we talked about how when we got to dinner, it was really nice, but we weren't quite dressed right. We had our fancy shirts on, but then on, on our bottom half, so we looked kind of weird. And how the tablecloth covered it. All you could see when you were sitting down was everybody's shirts. And we talked about how God has set the table for us and invites us all, but we're not quite ready. We're not quite dressed right. We still have some things that we need to give to him or we need to stop doing or we need to go do. And how God's grace is like the tablecloth. It covers all the parts that aren't quite right and we're still able to come and eat with God. Psalm 3, which is a psalm of David when he was fleeing from his son Absalom. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessings be on your people. Hi, Uh, for any of y'all who may not know me, my name is Lindy Berger, and I had the privilege of working out at Camp Eagle this year as a camp uh, counselor. So, sorry, I have notes, so (laughs) I'm gonna read off of those. Um, So when I say that this was the most fulfilling summer of my entire life, that's not an exaggeration. Um, I had the opportunity to witness so much life change, not only in my campers, but my fellow counselors as well. Um, So growing up, I wasn't really involved in a church. I knew who Jesus was, and I was aware of the things that I should and shouldn't do. And But that was pretty much where my faith stopped. Um, So I knew the right answers for Sunday school and most of the stories, but my relationship with the Lord was entirely dependent on rules and learning what I could when I did actually go to church, which, like I said, was not very often. Um... So I started going to Camp Eagle in 2018 when I was entering my freshman year of high school, and I fell in love. (laughs) Um, 
I loved that I got to worship twice a day in God's beautiful creation, and I loved that I got to hear two messages every day and be a part of a Bible study. Um, I tried to absorb as much as I could when I was there because I knew I wasn't going to be poured into uh, quite the same when I got home. Um, Camp Eagle became my church. I was saved out there, and on July 15th, 2021, I was baptized out there. Um, so 2022 was my last summer as a camper, and that year, Camp Eagle wasn't a mountaintop for my faith, but a launching pad. Um, I went off to college, and I found a church to be planted in, and I was no longer dependent on Sunday mornings to fill me. I read scripture on my own, and I had a little Bible study in my dorm room, which was so much fun. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for how the Lord moved and spoke during my last year at camp. Um, when it came time to apply, I didn't think twice about it. I loved camp so much, and I wanted to play a part in helping other campers who were just like me trying to find their way to the Lord. I saw chains break, I saw repentance, and I saw reconciliation. I learned more about what it meant to truly serve in those two months than I have in my entire life. I was surrounded by a family that constantly supported each other through the rough and ugly, and I am beyond grateful for the friendships that the Lord blessed me with through the people I met out at camp. Uh, <laughs> Those authentic relationships will truly last me a lifetime, and I am so blessed to call those people my friends. Um, and I just want to say this. I don't have my life together. I am not perfect, and nor will I ever be. <laughs> but the great thing about our Lord is that um, our imperfection doesn't stop him from using broken vessels like us for his glory. Uh, Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And if you hear nothing else I say, I pray that you hear this. You are never too broken to show God's love to others and to share his good news uh, of the gospel to the world. Um, we've all heard the saying, God doesn't call the equipped, but he equips the called. Well, I am walking evidence of that statement. Um, I had no clue what I was doing or what to expect, but we serve a good God that provides us uh, everything that we need every single day. And that's exactly what he did. And I want to leave you all with a bit of scripture that we had read over us before the start of every session. Uh, this is Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4. Um, so, oh, sorry, I lost my spot. Okay. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the, for the prisoners to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our Lord, to comfort all who mourn and provide those who grieve in Zion, to bestow them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will, call, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Live out every day with the knowledge that you have been anointed to proclaim the good news uh, to the afflicted. Thank you. Just real quickly, and um, do we have any of the sponsors that want to speak that just want to share just a little short little message or a new sponsor that might have gone that would like to? <laughs> Clay, I'm twisting your arm. Well, just, I mean, before he gets up here and talks, um, um, as you can tell, in years past, we've, the kids have always talked about all the rock climbing and rappelling and everything else, but I just feel like so many of these kids are um, strengthening their faith, and that has become the focus in this past year, but I'll give it to you. You only have like four minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Yeah, it was, she warned me ahead of this, and she wasn't directly looking at me, but I knew what she was saying, so I better get up here. I don't want to get, get her upset with me. Uh, yeah, it was my first church camp ever. Growing up uh, in the Divine area, we just didn't do church camp, any of us, and my kids all went off to Hermanson's camp and did some church camps, but it was my very first church camp, and man, what a great camp. Uh, that place is truly holy ground, and, and God is known there. He's shown there. Uh, it's a great, it's organized very well. The debriefings 
uh, were great after every sermon, our day groups, and some of the some of the St. Paul youth was in my day group, and man, they represented very well. Um, man, if you've not gone, it took me 57 years to do it, and it was a little bit of a challenge, but I tried to do everything that the kids did. It wasn't quite as easy for me, but uh, it, it was just good stuff all the way around, and and uh, I told Pat Clary, he's been after me a couple of years to, to go, and, and he was explaining to me what Camp Eagle was about, what it looked like, what it felt like, and when you come back, you're just on this high. Well, and I, I shared this in Wednesday's message to some of y'all, he missed the mark. We were sitting on a deck over the river, the headwaters of the new oasis, and the sun hadn't cleared the, the hilltop. And as it came over, it started lighting up the, the river valley and everything that's going on. We were looking at some deer, and there was all kinds of things going on. And, and I looked over at Pat, and I said, you just, you just didn't know how to tell me what this place was like. And I don't remember the exact quote. Pat could probably tell you. But, but we both laugh, laughed about it because unless you go, you don't know what it feels like and what it's like to be there. And, and, and again, I want to thank everybody for everything that you did to get us to Camp Eagle, and it was a very proud moment, and like I said, uh, um, y'all got a, we, we have a great group of kids here, and they represent this church very well, uh, very well mannered, and uh, again, thanks for all the support, and Lori just, she's all over the place, she just appears and disappears, reappears, and I, I don't know how she does it, but but she's all over that, all over those mountains, and and, and it, was, it was warm, not as warm as it is here, but it was, it was a good time for all, and I just want to thank you all so much for, for all that. And just real, real quick, um, I'm not going to say what those of you that don't know what the shirt means, but um, at breakfast after worship, um, ask one of these kids what their shirt means because you'd be really impressed. Thanks. worship together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy
So, I've, well, at Camp Eagle, um, I've, I've had the opportunity to go a few times, and my least favorite part is sitting on rocks and walking up and down hills, but my favorite part is uh, the worship, and they always, you know, I'll speak my, for myself, being an older uh, person up here playing younger songs, it's always good to go and see what these kids, and it's always like youth-led worship, and, and uh Golly, the, uh, God has equipped those young or those youth up there to, to really lead um, music, and it's pretty special. So, and it gets way crazier there than it does in here, I promise. <laughs> but y'all are working on it. So. We're working on it. <laughs> when all I see is a battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There is nothing to fear now, for I'm safe. So when I fight, I fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, and that belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, and that belongs to you And if you are
<laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings in our lives. We also thank you for our tough times because it makes us see our blessings. You are our great be- provider, and we are thankful. Lord, we thank you for this congregation and for the opportunity for our youth to lead worship. We pray for our youth and children along with their families. Lord, we pray for single parents and grandparents and parents who do not have children yet. Let us remember that it is your timing, not ours. You are the most high and we are and are with us each and every day. Lord, we thank you for this offering. May we be good stewards of this offering that you have blessed this congregation with. Help us to be mindful how we use this offering. We pray for the contractors and workers who are working on our church renovations. Keep them safe while they are finishing this project. We also pray for the committee members and leaders that have made this renovation project run smoothly. Lord, we pray for our leaders of our country, state, county, and city. Give them wisdom to make the right decision and help them to rely on you for guidance. We pray for our military and their families. Keep our country in your hands and protect us from the evil one. Lord, we pray for those who are celebrating birthdays this week. Help us to realize that each day is a gift and to focus on each day. We pray for new births. We pray for families who have loved ones who are recovering from surgeries, hospital stays, and other illnesses. We also pray for families who have lost loved ones. Give them peace to know their loved one their loved one is in heaven. Lord, we know there are many who are in need of prayer. They may be having spiritual battles, health battles, or just feel lonely. Lord, we offer up the names to you silently right now. We lift these individuals up to you, Lord. Give them healing and peace to deal with the situations they are facing. And we thank you for all the blessings you have showered upon us. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Please stand as you join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He assumed in death. On the third day, he rose again. He is in the face of the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the earth the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And as we prepare our hearts and mind for communion with our Lord, And Savior Jesus Christ, I would ask you to please uh, join me in our words of confession. Most merciful God, I confess my sins to you. I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
So as the kids have learned this week that from Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We, they learned that we cannot cover up our sins because they will be revealed to us and hopefully to us if we're good. With the Zoom, I was reminded that um, we, we dress for the part sometimes. We dress with only what people can see, but God sees it all. And so this is what we're confessing to him. And I love that in your prayer that you say, thank you, Lord, for the tough times. Because it reminds us that we are in need of a Savior. And so here is the good news, y'all. This is why Jesus Christ came for you. He came to save you. He came to clothe you with garments of righteousness and purity. He does all of this because he loves you. And this is why that we can move on into a world with lots of needs right now and be that light and be that salt for people who need a glimpse of hope. So know because of what Jesus Christ has done, your sins are forgiven and you are his ambassador to the world out there. So go forth in his strength and in his purpose. Amen. Y'all have a seat, please. All right, so we are going to be doing a communion by intention. Um, what this means is, is that um, you will be getting a wafer, whether it's regular or gluten-free, and you can uh, dip it into either the gold chalice, which is going to have red wine in it, or into the silver chalice that is going to have white grape juice in it. Um, this is a table that is for those that believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, those that have been um, baptized by the Holy Spirit. This is his table, and so we invite all those that are wanting to come and partake in it to, to do that. If you're going to stay in your seat with a little cup, if you'll go ahead and remove your wafer from that and join me in it, and then the rest we will see you up here. We remember in the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me, so take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the complete forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. I'm happy to say Lori is going to be joining me in serving communion today, and we will have y'all usher up. And as we do, we continue to sing some of the songs that were meaningful to us at camp. But I invite y'all to come. Oh, 
I searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures that fade I'll never be enough And you came along And put me back together And every desire body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give you his strength, give you his peace, give you the eyes to see how he is working in your life. Amen. Oh, just wait. Sorry, I'm going out of turn. Is this on? All right. Um, I, did, I should have got up here earlier after Clay here, but um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say uh, I was one of the sponsors that goes to camp. I've, I've been going for a number of years, and uh, and this year, I got to go on the Zip 3K with Joe. It was his first time. I got to go rappelling with Cece. Uh, it was her first time. And I got to go on a night Sherpa uh, with Anna. And then after that, we went and laid and uh, looked at the stars, which out there, you can see the Milky Way. It's really cool. And I got to hang out with Ricky uh, and uh, watch him do one of his favorite things, too. And I just want to say, you know, we go up there to be a blessing to these campers, but we are absolutely blessed to be a blessing. It is an amazing experience, and Camp Eagle is quite expensive, and it would be one hefty bill for us, for all five of us to go. And uh, so, and there's a lot of campers that would not be able to go without the support of this congregation. And I just want to say thank you all for your donations and for supporting the uh, the fundraising activities. Um, this this church is amazing, and you are truly a blessing. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you for that. And so you know too that the kids are the kids are one of the ways that they want to say thank you to you is by uh, serving y'all breakfast this morning, and so that's going to be part of it as well. All right, Carter. Okay, you want to do the doxology now? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine, shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his shalom and peace. Amen. Amen. Now choose this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen.
right there. Dog. Dog.